Global.com News. We're reporting to you live on the scene from the center of the eye of the hurricane. We promised you three videos a week, and David, we're going to give it to you. Today, we're going to be doing some pulse big spray overhead in the 4F position. Let's go ahead and get set up. <laughs> All right, so we're going through the comments uh, for the vertical 3G Pulse MIG video, and Charles Baker wanted to know about uh, the stick out, you know, and how that's going to affect uh, his BBs and stuff that he's getting in flat and horizontal position. So we're definitely going to address that today. And then uh, had a little bit more of a conversation. We go down here and wants to know about the same thing, if he needs to do any oscillation in the, uh, the, the various positions overhead, uh, uphill and downhill. We already covered uphill. I wouldn't run Pulse downhill. Um, I just switch over to short circuit MIG. Anytime you're doing downhill, it's going to be thinner material. But we're going to go ahead and do some overhead and help Mr. Charles Baker out answer some of his questions. So let's head on over to the stand. -o. All right, let's cover some settings and uh, some other pertinent details. We're running 045 diameter 70S6 wire. We have a 9010 gas uh, for our gas. Remember, you got to have 82% or higher to achieve a true spray transfer. Okay, uh, we're going to be running 165 inches a minute, and I went ahead and did a couple practice pieces earlier, so we're going to hit 1.02 on the trim. Always, always, always. I can't emphasize this enough. If you guys are going to work on something that's new, it's a different material thickness than you're used to working on. Try to mock up a piece. Um, same material, same joint configuration to dial your settings in, especially if you're not working off a of WPS, um, which a lot of cases most of you aren't. Try to you know get those settings dialed in on similar material, same joint configuration. It's going to make your life a lot easier, okay? A lot less grinding that way. So we're all set up here. Um, we'll go over back to the stand. We'll get set up with that and talk about some of the, um, the technique that we're going to be using, and then we'll weld. All right, so because we're using a power source that has an external wire feed machine, because we're using that system, we have to use a voltage sensing lead. A lot of you guys had questions about this in the previous video as to what, that, what type of clamp that was. It's called a voltage sensing lead. And what that does is it gives the external wire feeder feedback. And it tells it exactly the output that it's getting so that it can regulate my voltage because pulse MIG welding is a constant voltage process. So to maintain a constant voltage, it has to have return information to ensure that it's getting what it's putting out. We're gonna go ahead and use fume extraction again in the overhead position. We're gonna maintain that three quarter inch to one inch contact tip to work distance, half inch to three quarter, probably half inch to an inch. Anywhere in that realm is gonna be uh, pretty decent for us. Remember, we wanna, we wanna hear that, that buzz sound, that harsh buzz. You don't want too much crackling in there. We're getting crackling, that means I'm getting too close. I need to pull back just a little bit or you could adjust your trim if you're holding the correct contact tip to work distance, you can adjust your trim. Usually trim values above one are going to give you a uh, longer arc length and a more fluid puddle. So if you're getting crackling, you want a, more, a little bit more fluid puddle. If you need a stiffer puddle, you know, you're going in vertical, you want to drop that trim value down probably below one. So when I adjust my trim, I usually bump it by one hundredths, okay? So I'll go from, let's say one, if that's not enough, uh, I need a more fluid puddle, I'll go to 1.01. .01. 1.02 and just you know you don't want to make big changes like you would wire feed speed or voltage um, so same thing you know if I need a stiffer puddle a little bit drier I'll go from 1.00 to like 0 0.99 0 0.98 stiffen that puddle up a little bit all right overall turned out pretty decent I am going to run a second and third pass show you guys how to do multi-pass stack those passes uh, there was some questions on whether you should weld from top to bottom bottom to top on these we're gonna get into that. All right, so some of you probably noticed I got the uh, baby shark on here. If that joke doesn't make sense to you, go back and watch the origami cart build, episode two. While you're there, watch all three of them. This clamp is here to give me stability. I don't wanna prop up against the plate because it's gonna start getting hot pretty soon, right? So I'm just kind of getting myself into a groove, keep myself stable and work across that joint. That way everything stays kind of uniform, especially if you're doing production work, uh, you know, wells that need to be aesthetically appeasing, you know, prop up, you know, get stable. Um, addition to that, voltage sensing lead. I know we already talked about that. Do not stick this on your workpiece clamp, okay? That's a no-no. Try to keep it away from your workpiece clamp. 
clamp it to your workpiece. Even though both of them are hooked here, you want to keep this one closest to the welding area. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit up pass number two. I'm going to lay that on the bottom. So all I'm going to do is follow the toe of this previous weld right here. And that should split 50-50 on here. I'm going to keep that same roughly 45 degree angle. Now you'll notice if I start getting a little bit of that crackling or that spatter sound, what I'm going to do is I'm either going to extend that contact tip to work distance or I'm going to speed up a little bit. Okay, If that puddle starts to build up higher and make contact with that wire, I'm going to get that crackling sound. So that tells me I need to move a little bit faster if my contact tip to work distance is correct. If the contact tip to work distance is too close, I'm just going to start slowly pulling back until I hear that buzzing sound and, and maintain that same travel speed. All right, so that's pass number two. We're going to go ahead and put in pass number three now. So pass two, we, we covered up the uh, weld number one 50% leaving half of that uh, weld metal on the plate, the other half across 50% of that weld. Now pass number three, I'm gonna go to the top toe of weld number one, where that, uh, up against this top plate here, I'm gonna tie in 50% to here, 50% over uh, pass number two. Okay, so you won't be able to see weld number one anymore, you'll only be able to see two and three once we're done. I'm gonna aim and favor the top edge just a little bit more, just slightly more. Gravity's gonna help me get down into there. Notice I'm not doing a lot of oscillation. It's pretty much a nice, slow, steady push right across the joint. You really don't have to do much oscillation. Uh, if the puddle's not doing what you want, not flowing where you need it to, you can oscillate a little bit, right? It's gonna be, uh, each puddle's gonna dictate, right? So we'll go ahead and get into it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this down and I wanna show you guys a, a neat little trick. All right, so a lot of people wanna know how fast they should be going. So a good rule of thumb is you wanna go the speed that's gonna allow you to maintain the, the proper width of your puddle. Okay, so typically with gas metal arc welding, it is recommended that your puddle should be no wider than five to six times the diameter of your electrode. So we're running 045 wire today. So for you folks across the pond, that's 1.14 millimeters. See, I'm getting better. Five to six times that is roughly five sixteenths or 7.9 millimeters for you guys across the pond. So this is a, just a good visual representation. I cut five to six pieces. I'm gonna set it on the plate and you'll see that's roughly, it's a little warm there, five to six times is about the size of that weld. So once I reach that weld width, I'm gonna maintain that speed, right? If I start slowing down, the puddle's gonna get wider. If I start speeding up, it's gonna get narrower. So just maintain that width and then travel down the joint. I hope you guys learned something from the video. Uh, I had a really good time making it. And until next time, make every well better than your last. <laughs> you doing the intro or you got the spray? I'm working on it. Is that, is that as ironic as it sounds? I need some water. This is Redbeard with Well.com News. We're reporting to you live on the scene from the center of the eye of the hurricane. We promised you three videos a week. And David, we're going to give it to you. Today, we're going to be doing some pulse mix spray overhead in the 4F position. Let's go ahead and get set up.